Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about a very important theorem in calculus called Rawls' Theorem. So let's go through it carefully and then we'll do an example. So Rawls' Theorem. Rawls' Theorem. So the conditions for Rawls' Theorem are really, really important. So let's state them carefully. So suppose, so there are three conditions. So the first condition is that your function is continuous on a closed interval. So f is continuous, I'll just put c o n t, on say the closed interval a, b. Second condition is that it's differentiable on the open interval. So 2 f is, I'll just put diff, differentiable on the open interval a comma b. Third condition is that the function values at the endpoints are the same. So 3, f of a is equal to f of b. So if these three conditions are satisfied, then you can invoke Rawls' theorem. So if all three conditions hold, then there is a number. I'll use the pound sign for a number. Now, there could be more than one, as you'll see in a minute when we look at the pictures. So then there is a number, c, in the open interval such that, as t means such that, the derivative at c is equal to zero. So Rawls' theorem says if you have a continuous function, on the, if the function is continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, and the y values are the same at the endpoints, then you can find the number in the interval where the derivative is zero. Okay? So let's look at a picture so, so that it makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and erase the conditions. And we'll go through them again in a minute. So I'm going to erase this. I'll leave the title of the theorem up. It just looks good. All right, so here's, here's some pictures. Check this out. So here's A, and here's B. Let's try, to, let's try to violate Rawls' theorem, see if we can do it. So maybe this is F of A. Oh, but the Y values have to be the same. So wherever we start, we have to finish. So this is also F of B. It's one of the conditions in Rawls. And so we have to get from here to here. So one way to do it is like this. Well, if we do that, sure enough, there is a number c in the open interval where the derivative is 0. Remember, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So in this case, you would have a horizontal tangent line here, so the derivative would be 0. So there would be our number c where the derivative of the function is equal to 0. Um, let's, try to, let's try to break it. What if we do something like this? Let's see, what if we do, I got, I got to get to B. <laughs> All right, okay, <laughs> even worse. Now there are three numbers, right? There's three numbers. Call it C1, C2, C3. There are three numbers where the derivative is zero, so we weren't able to break Rolf's theorem. What if we try to cheat? Well, we could do something like this. But then, that would mean the function's not continuous. So Rawls' theorem requires the function to be continuous. If it didn't, we can break the theorem by doing something like this, right? But we can't, because it's continuous. So another way to try to break the theorem is to do something like this, have a sharp edge. In this case, the derivative would be undefined. However, we can't do that either, because Rawls' theorem requires differentiability. So now you see why the theorem has those conditions, right? It requires continuity, because otherwise you could put a little hole there, and like the theorem wouldn't work. And it requires differentiability because otherwise you can make little sharp edges like this, or cusps. Remember, this is called a cusp. That's just a sharp edge. And in both of these cases, the function is not differentiable. But we can't do that because Rawls' theorem requires differentiability. So most of the time when you're studying Rawls' theorem, you're in a classroom setting, or maybe you're just you know, learning about this on your own for fun. Uh, most of the time, though, you have to find C. So let's go ahead and do a really simple example of, of just finding C. So here's a simple example. The function f of x equals, how about this one, negative x squared plus 4x. Hmm, I think that'll work. And let's look at the interval 0, 4. Okay. Yeah, it should work. So let's find the value of c uh, under which Rawls' theorem holds. By the way, uh, this function is continuous, right, because it's a polynomial. So it's continuous everywhere. In particular, it's continuous on this closed interval. It's differentiable everywhere. In particular, it's, it's differentiable on the open interval. So it's continuous on the closed interval. It's differentiable on the open interval. And you can check. You can plug in 0. You can get 0. 
you can plug in 4, if I did it right, be negative 4 squared plus 4 times 4. This is negative 16 plus 16, so it's equal to 0. So f of 4 is equal to f of 0. So all three conditions in Rawls' theorem are satisfied. So there is a number in, these, in this open interval where the derivative is 0. Let's find that number. Let's see if we can find it. So to find that number, you would take the derivative, and you would set it equal to 0. This is a pretty easy derivative. You just use the power rule. So negative 2x plus 4, and you set it equal to 0. Then just uh, subtract the 4, so you get negative 2x equals negative 4. And then divide by negative 2, so you get x equals uh, 2. So that would be the value of c. Right? This would be the value of c. Dividing by the negative gives you a positive. That would be the value of c that lies in this interval, so things are good, where the derivative um, is 0. So Rawls theorem does work for this, and that's how you find c. So to find c in Rawls, you just take the derivative and set it equal to 0. It's usually pretty straightforward. I hope this video has helped. Uh, remember, the conditions for Rawls are it has to be con uh, continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, and the endpoints have to have the same function values. And whenever that happens, all it's telling us is there's going to be at least one place where the derivative is zero. In other words, there's at least one place where we have a horizontal tangent line. That's it. Thanks for visiting my channel. I hope this video has helped you in some way.